At the time of his ordination in 1821, in post-revolutionary France, the church had pretty well been decimated. Religious education had fallen into shambles, and the preaching of the gospel was of mediocre quality. Basil Moreau, a young priest of the Diocese of Le Mans, only 22 years old, was determined to do something about this crisis. He had a vision of a religious congregation of men and women, priests, brothers, and sisters, who would work together in ministry as educators in the faith, assisting the diocesan clergy by preaching missions, teaching the Catholic faith, founding schools, and being sent forth as missionaries overseas. Father Moreau named his religious community the Congregation of St. Croix, in English, Holy Cross, after the name of a suburb of Le Mans, where he founded his congregation. In May of 1857, Rome approved this new religious community of Holy Cross, and one month later, its mother church in Le Mans was dedicated, named Notre Dame de Sainte Croix, Our Lady of Holy Cross. Father Moreau was especially drawn to this image of Mary standing at the foot of the cross of her son, a woman who knew grief and was a lady of sorrows. For Father Moreau, the church's feast of the seven sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as it was then called, captured in a special way the image of Mary whom he wished to hold up as a model for all the priests, brothers, and sisters of his new religious family. A woman who suffered much, yet a woman of faith, courage, confidence, trust, and hope. The Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows traditionally celebrates seven sorrows associated with Mary as presented in the scriptures. The first, the presentation of the infant Jesus in the temple, when Simeon the prophet foretold that a sword of sorrow would pierce her heart. The second, the flight into Egypt. The third sorrow, Mary's and Joseph's desperate search for their 12-year-old son lost in Jerusalem. The fourth, Mary meeting Jesus as he carried his cross through the streets of Jerusalem. The fifth, her standing at the foot of the cross on Calvary this morning's gospel passage. The sixth, Mary receiving into her arms the lifeless body of her own flesh and blood. And the seventh and final sorrow, Mary witnessing the burial of her only child. Each and every sorrow portrays Mary in union with her son, not alone or apart, never attracting attention to herself, but intimately joined with Jesus as a mother to her own flesh and blood throughout his life, but especially in his suffering and death. Why have Christians, both in the East and in the West, so honored this woman for some 2,000 years? Because of her divine maternity as Mother of God, her immaculate conception, her assumption, 
Yes, surely. But perhaps more importantly, Christians have seen in Mary what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be a person of real faith, what it means to be a Christian sharing in the passion, death, and resurrection of her son. Holy Cross priests, brothers and sisters, today minister in some 20 countries around the world. Some have been imprisoned, others tortured, some even killed for the sake of the faith. Wherever Holy Cross religious minister, be it in Bangladesh, France, Uganda, Chile, here at Notre Dame, or elsewhere, all find encouragement and, strengthen, and strength through the prayers and example of Our Lady of Sorrows, the first disciple of Jesus. But today's feast is not just for Holy Cross religious, but for all of us. Mary teaches us that compassion, uncertainty, grief, sorrow, disappointment, disillusionment, financial uncertainty and instability, tragedy, illness, even death itself, need not leave us bitter or despondent. Mary never despaired in her sufferings. Rather, she looked to Jesus and trusted that God's love and power and grace would prevail. Today's Feast of Mary's Sorrows remind us of values that we don't hear too much about these days. Commitment in good times and in bad. Fidelity, long-suffering self-sacrifice. Faith, hope, and love. Mary reminds us of the importance of always being near to those we love, no matter how difficult that might be at times. And she teaches us how to let go and simply trust in God. May Our Lady's sorrows, Our Lady of sorrows, pray for us and strengthen us as we follow in the footsteps of her son to Calvary and to the cross, and to life everlasting. <laughs>